This meeting is being recorded. Okay. And let me do my slideshow. Mm -hmm. There you go. And all right, let's start. I would like to say good evening to each and everyone. Okay, good morning, good evening, Uncle Ed, Auntie Joyce, Papang, Clifford, June, and then uh, Mahal, and Yasi. Thank you guys once again for uh, your presence tonight. And it's hot out there now. <laughs> you know, we can feel we can feel the warm outside. Uh, thank you once again for all those people who listen to our YouTube channel. And it's so convenient for us that we can we have our recordings all the time that we can go back. You can pause it. You can go back. You know, when every time I go to my break time, I, I just, you know, listen to like Dr. Jim. I, I listen to Pastor Al and Pastor Brad West. So it's very convenient. It's in our hand, you know, in the palm of your hands now. All our cell phones is really equipped with all those new equipments, features of our cell phone. And again, uh, before we begin with our Bible study tonight, I would like to make an announcement first. Uh, next next week, that's going to be on May 24th. And for all of you uh, that will listen to this also, we're not going to have our Bible study here in my house. And we're going to change venue because Yellen, um, she invited me for uh, Jake's graduation. And we're going to have our Bible study into their in their house and that's going to be on may 24th mark that down uh take uh put that in note uh, may 24th and their address that's going to be in 9076 9076 manalang road so i'll see you guys over there that's going to be next next week you know um and again thank you guys once again and before we begin i would like um, to make a shout out uh to are some of our listeners like um, Gali, Liv, and them in Reno, uh, Jet, Ding Dong, uh, my cousin in the Philippines, uh, Ate Mili, and um, some of our brothers and sisters, Rocky, and uh, of course, Jane, you know, and uh, I would like to congratulate also Clifford. Oh, see, can you see? And congrats, congrats, man. And um, for, you know, uh, making that up and for Kai Kai and let's pray for Jaden. Malapit na si Jaden men, no? Yeah, yeah, malapit, yeah, let's pray for that. Let's pray for that, you know. Um, and I'm so proud with those guys, yeah, those, you know, just to have that, to take that. It, it, oh, good, 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 you know, good. Yeah, it's, it's really good, you know, to influence those younger generation to go to that uh, direction. And again, well, let's just pray for them. Let's pray for them. Uh, we continue to encourage them. That way, in their part, they can also encourage the next generation. And that's going to be them now, you know. So, like, on Uncle Ed's generation and Papa's generation, it's us. And then now, from us, it's going to be the fourth generation. So, it's like that. We have to pass on the baton or the torch to, to the next generation. So let's continue to pray uh, for Jaden as he continued for his uh, basic training. And um, what else? Uh, announcement uh, to Auntie Loida for more recovery for her and for all those people, our work, our job, which is our daily, daily things that we always continue to do. Let's continue to pray for that also, our protection, our financial. And for all those people that going um, travel this year, so let's pray for that also. And for all those people in the Philippines, uh, our loved ones in Hawaii, here in Las Vegas, let's continue to pray each other. And um, we do, we are so far from each other, but the one thing that we can do is prayer. Okay. Now tonight we're going to continue with our study. This is going to be the third part of the shield of faith. Now um, we. We continue and keep go, keep on keeping on with our study. Again, before we begin with our Bible study tonight, it is essential for every born-again believer that you need to be clean before the Lord. And by doing so, using 1 John 1.9, if you confess your sins, 
He is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you for all unrighteousness. With your heads bow and let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for my family, loved ones, friends, and for all those people that's gonna, that, that will listen to this audio, Father, and the video in YouTube channel. <clears throat> Bless them, Father. Bless them, O oh Lord. And I know that the Holy Spirit will guide them uh, for all those people who has a, a hungry heart. And they can find it, Father. It's your responsibility to provide them the truth. And we are here. We're willing to, we are available before you, Father, to, to uh, facilitate all the truths that they need, Father. And thank you for tonight once again. And we ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate our hearts and mind with a revealed truth, Father, so that we can uh, comprehend your word and apprehend it in our heart and we can apply it in our life situation, Father. There's so many things to do outside, Father. We are facing in a world that no one uh, can imagine, that this is the, the critical part in the dispensation, Father, in the human history. Uh, we need to have the, the, the full armor, Father. We need to put it on. Thank you so much, Father, for who and what you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, last week, let me go back a little review um, from last week's study that we had. Now, Paul, again, in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, he commanded the believer that finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord, you know, in the strength and in his might. Now, he, he continued to uh, encourage the believer to command the believer that we have to put on the full armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6, that's very important. Uh, like I told, uh, you know, it's, it's crazy because all this, the thing that we have been studied, you know, it's just the omniscience of God. That after we have our study, some of the people that ask questions on me, it just relate on our study. Can you, can you imagine? I have so many friends, many, many co-workers that they ask me so many questions just this week, just this week. That it's just relate to what we have been studying. It, it's very amazing. You know, you study this, and then the next day somebody asks you a question, the same question, the answer that you already been studied. You will have that. And I said, wow, we just studied this last week about stress, you know, putting on the full armor of God. And for all those people right here also, those, those people are listening, uh, I encourage each one of you to keep on keeping on. Uh, continue. Uh, there's no excuse. There's no excuse to uh, not to study the word of God. And I remember what Kobe Bryant say, the, the winner, there's no excuses for the winners. You know, you have to say, oh, we lose because oh, I, I have my shoes. I, I, we lose because, you know, I, I got sick. Uh, I lose. We lose in the game because, you know, there's too many excuses. But for the winner, well, no matter what happened in your life, you have to go on. So now, uh, let's continue for that. The, Paul, he continued to encourage the believer. Remember, in Ephesians chapter 1, what did Paul say? I pray, I pray that the eyes of your heart will be enlightened. He encouraged that. That's one of the prayer of Apostle Paul. And that's going to be my prayer for each one of you. For all those people who wants to listen to this, it's my prayer that, that the eyes of your heart will be enlightened. And that's the, the part of the Holy Spirit to see you, to see everything that we had been studied. And that's part of me also that I've been growing. I, you know, you guys are growing. Everybody is growing. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad for all those years that we had been studying. And we are still here. We know how to encourage people. We, we, we give them the truth. And now Paul, he continued to say, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, what did he say? Above all, now this is this is the piece of equipment aside from the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, and uh, uh, the shoes of preparation of the gospel of peace. Now he said here, above all, aside from the three, three equipment, you have to put on the shield of faith. Now, like I said, Believers, many people, they're, they want God to change their circumstances of life. This is so vital in the Christian way of life. You need to have a shield. 
in order for you to cover up. If you don't have the shield, you're not going to be relaxed in the Christian way of life. You're not going to have peace. Now here, you need to have the shield so that in your momentum testing in your life, remember, hello, good evening. In the, in the Christian way of life, in the momentum testing, you will be tested in this area, in this area of testing in your life. Now, number one of that testing is because it's all sin, sinful testing. The second one is we have people testing. And the third one, you will be tested by system, you know. And the fourth one is we have thought testing. The fifth one is we have disaster testing. You need to pass all this testing in your life. And uh, the last one, which is the highest form of testing, it is the prosperity testing. Well, which one would you like to get first? Many believers say, oh, Lord, I, I want that prosperity testing first. I would like to get that one. I want to try that one, Lord. And God said, no, not yet, because that's the highest form of test in your life. The prosperity to say, I want to have a lot of money. God said, no, you, you're no, you don't have no capacity to handle blessing anyway. So now you need to have the shield of faith in order for you to block all this test in your life. You need to have that one. And last week. Uh, we continue to study about the shield of faith. It, this is, what is the shield of faith? This is the faith rest technique or the faith rest drill. See, that's a term. That's a term. The, the shield of faith, it is the faith rest life in the book of Hebrews chapter 4. Now, picking up the shield of faith is the function of the faith rest. Resting in the Lord, resting in any in, in, in every various circumstances of life, the word various circumstances of life, any kind of circumstances in your life, whatever it is. You know, we face we, we face different kinds of battle in life. You, you know, you you I, I I'll be facing financial, you may be facing your your health, you will be facing your 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 marriage. You'll be facing about friendship. You got betrayed by your friend. You know, we all fight different battles in life. We all face different circumstances in life. But the only solution is we only have one solution is to go back to the word of God. Whatever, whatever you face, various circumstances of life, one solution, you just need to enter into the rest of God. The rest of God. In Hebrews chapter, chapter 4. Now, what is faith rest life? The faith rest life is the life of peace designed for you as a believer. See, God designed for you in eternity past that no matter what you face, any circumstances in your life in this, in this world, God gives you a rest. God gives you a rest. You know, in the midst of the tornado, there's always the eye of the tornado that you always Stay right over there. You, you have to, to stay relaxed in spite of what's going on around you. See, that's the life of peace. What did Paul say in, in, uh, in the book of, of Philippians? He says, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I will say rejoice. Rejoicing. He said, God designed a peace for you. He wants to share his happiness to every believer. This life is characterized by a moment-by-moment moment tranquility. Relax. That's why rest. Rest here is a mental attitude of relax. It's a relaxed mental attitude. It's free from sin. That's the rest that the book of Hebrew was talking about. It's not that, you know, you're about to go to sleep and you're just resting now. Or you just sit, sitting down, or you just resting now. But this rest is a moment by moment rest in the Lord. Happiness, happiness. Now, if you're not rest, if you're not resting in the Lord, you don't have no happiness. You are restless. You know, if you don't have no rest, can you imagine? You are tired. You are tired. 
if you're tired working for eight hours, you need to have a rest. That's why sometimes we they, they give us a break. Out of your eight hours working, you need to have a break. What happened if you don't have no break? You get burned out. You every every person will get burned out. The same thing in the Christian way of life. Can you imagine? You go through life. You go through life with all the, the, the heat in the battlefield. What happened to you? What, what's gonna happen if you go to, if you go through life and you get hit by the by the arrow in the battlefield? You get wounded. So the happiness that we need and stability. You need you need to have stability. Stability. Remember the the solid ground that we are standing. It is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our firm foundation. He is our firm foundation. See, this is the faith rest life, the life of peace that is signed by God for every believer. You know, it, it's so nice to be happy. Every time I go to work, I look at people and I know there's always something in their in inside of them. I have my coworker that I, you know, he pretend that to, he has to be happy, but at the end of the day, he told me some story that you know. He he been through a lot of depression, but I know, I know because that's we we had been studied that already. We had been studying that because now the book of Hebrew, he challenged the the generation, the new generation. He said here now the mechanics is a technique. Now the master, when you go to martial arts, one thing that the master will teach you is you need to learn how to block. You need to learn how to block. That's the master will teach you. Not only he will teach you, you need to learn how to punch or to kick, but he will teach you also how to learn to block all those kick and punch. The same thing in the Christian way of life, God gives you the equipment to block the enemy's fairy arrow. Now he said here, the mechanics is to mix the promises of God with faith. You need to mix this together, the promises and faith. You have to mix this together. See, if you have a cement, if you're not going to mix that with water, water, you know, it's not going to make any concrete. It's no good if you just have a cement without water. You cannot make any concrete. If you try to make a building or you're trying to make a wall, but see the thing, you need to have the water and the cement in order for you to create a concrete. This is the Christian way of life. The book of Hebrew, he said, the, the reason why the Exodus generation, all the word of God did not profit them because they never mix the promises of God with faith. You need to have this. And what is faith? Faith is the substance of the things hoped for, the things that you never see. Faith. Is, is your ETM card, you know, you, you have your ETM. Everybody have their ETM card. Faith is like the ETM card that whatever God put you in your bank account, that's where you withdraw by faith. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought that the Bible says that I'm so rich in the Lord, but how could I get that? How could you get, how could you withdraw? In the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, blessed be the God of Father in our Lord Jesus Christ in the heavenlies. Our blessing in the heavenlies. See, it's in the heavenlies. How could you get that blessing from in the heavenly, in the spiritual realm, and bring that into the visible realm by faith? Faith is the one that you withdraw. The faith is where you withdraw and sometimes because of of you know we don't use faith we have faith but we don't we don't use it and that's the time that we 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 believe that we have our bank account but we never we never get anything out of it still right there your balance still one million the balance that you have in your bank account in heaven is you're still rich but you're living as a, as a skunk here in the Christian way of life. You are rich, 
That's how God look at you. All you have to do is claim, <laughs> claim, claim. You know, for example, somebody told you that, somebody told you, oh, you know, you won a $1 million. It's right over there. All you have to do is to claim it. And you're just right here sitting down. And you're so miserable. You have so many bills, but you do have a $1 million because you won. The same thing in the Christian way of life. We are here so miserable, but because we never claim what we have in the Lord. All we have to do is faith. Okay, now we study the Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 two weeks ago. It took us two weeks just to knock down one verse. Therefore, let us fear less. Now, the word fear here is you need to be afraid of living life in worry. You need to be afraid of living life in pitiness, self-pity, that you think no one loves you and, and you're just alone, nobody, you know. Many people are like that. You have to, you know, you have to be afraid of living life in depression. You have to be afraid of living life discouraged that's why he said let us fear less a, a promise being unclaimed of entering into his rest any of you should should seem come short of it now listen if you come short of claiming of entering into that rest this is what happened the believer who comes short in god's rest to the scar tissue of the soul which is the human viewpoint in mind and all those garbage that we have we suck up from the world all those information from cosmos outside in the devil's in the devil's world and we put that into our subconsciousness the arrogance and emotional complex of sins the control of the soul by lust by the lust patterns see that's how we came up short because we have garbage in our soul now what happened if we came up short into that god's rest there is the alternative of instead you are happy now what happened now failure to claim the promises of god through your own faith results in building up stress in your soul i'm telling you that's where it is right over there the reason why believer you are in, in your anxiety, in the stress mode, because you've, you came up short in God's rest. The rest is sharing. God wants to share his happiness for every believer. Why did we came up short? Because we failed to claim the, the promises of God by faith. So we build up all the stress in our soul. Stress here, stress here, stress here. See, if stress is how you roll, if the stress is, is your modus operandi in your life, then it's it's crazy, you know. And I saw a lot of people, and we're we're go we're gonna go to that point. Stress in your soul cannot be cured by any system of counseling. You need to have Bible doctrine to replace all those garbage in your mind. You need to have the divine viewpoint to replace those garbage that we have in our mind. So now, because of failure to claim the promises of God, now here comes our stress. You know, you, you have that. What is it, question, what is it that's stressing you up right now? Is there anything in your life that's stressing you up? Was it your job? Was it your uh, career? Was it your friend, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your, your husband, your wife, or your financial, your health? You know, there's so many factors that can make you stress. There's so many factors that can make you stress in this life. See, if you are in the, in the mode of stress, he said here, stress can... Stress in the soul knocks out the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And of course, because stress is a mental attitude, sin. Now, if you sin against God, what happened? You grieve the Holy Spirit and you quench the Holy Spirit. 
Now you knock out the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That's part of doctrinal orientation and the coordination of the faith risk drill among the problem solving devices. So you knock out that instead of the, the Holy Spirit will work on you because you, you committed sin. See, you know, stress is not God's will that we have to be anxious about anything. What is it that makes you? Now we're going to go to that point. I will teach you. I will teach you. God will teach you here. Part of the psychological principle of stress. The reason why I go back to this because last week we are we're about to get done. So I, I make a little review on this because this is so important. In psych psychological principle of stress, when you go to a uh, psychologist, they will teach you the same thing right we have over here. Okay. Now, psychological principle. Now, what is a principle? It's a foundation. It's one plus one equals two. You cannot bend it. You cannot twist it. It's a principle. Now, one number one principle of psychological principle of stress is he said here that there is a definite relationship between stress and cognition. The word cognition is learning. Okay. There's a, there's a relationship between that stress and cognition. Now, stress makes you forgetful. Now, many people, if they are, if they are bonds of stress in their life, sometimes that's why your heartbeat, you know, the heartbeat keep popping up because of the stress. Your mind, listen, stress inside of you will affect your body. Don't you know that that ninety percent that goes to the hospital? It's, it's, it's a stress related. It's a stress related. Now he said, stress makes you forgetful because you know why? You're thinking about something that, see, you know, stress is fear. The reason why you are stressing is because of fear. That's, that's the, the, the less common denominator. That's the bottom line. The reason why human being, Christian, are in a stress mode because you are fear of something. You are afraid of something. What is it that you are afraid of? There is something that you are afraid. Now, going back to the Exodus generation, what they are afraid of? The giants in Canaan. When they received the report, Moses, you know, the land is full of, it's good it's full of milk and honey. But what, what else did it say? But we are just like a grasshopper because the people who live in the land, they are giants. They were afraid because of their, uh, you know, they were afraid of the giants. That makes them anxious. They, they, it, it creates a stress in their soul. And what is it in your life right now that, that, that's stressing you out? The reason why, this one too, you know, I heard it from uh, Chuck Swindoll in 98.5. I, I, I think this, this particular phrase is just a knockdown. One, one time I'm going to, uh, I went to work and I turned on 90.5 and it was Chuck, Chuck Wendell uh, during that time was teaching and it just absolutely bullseye. You know, stress robs your happiness and that's very true. Stress robs your happiness. Many people, they're stressing about something that never happened yet. You're thinking about the future and, you know, from, from that future, during this time, you ought to be happy by now. You, you're supposed to be happy by now. It's because you're stressing out of the thing in the future that is, is, is not even happening yet. Can you imagine? And Michael Jordan say in his last dance, he said, you know, why I should be, uh, 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 why, why I should be stressing out myself. I didn't release the ball yet. The ball stand in my hand. But whatever happened, either I shoot the ball or not. At least you shoot the ball. See, that's what happened in the Christian way of life. Believers, something that is not happening yet. They're over here. Stressing out themselves. See, stress makes you forgetful. The reason for that is because once you are stressed in the stress mode, 
you only think about yourself. See, that's self. It's all about, it's, it's the self-centeredness. If you are in the stress mode, you're thinking about self. You're not even thinking people around you. Stress makes you forgetful and impairs your memory. Make, it makes a lot of sense that so many, what's this? If you have friends that it keeps on stressing, yeah, they always forget a lot of things. Because now they have a tunnel vision. Like I said, they have a, you know, when you go to the tunnel, it was just dark and you, they, all they can see is the, the light of the tunnel. That's how you become if you have so many stress in your life. Now, listen, this is free. You know how many millions, thousands of dollars you have to pay when you go to, to the medical field to fix your stress, anxiety? Just the pill alone, that's thousands of dollars that you have to pay in the medical field. But the Bible is free to give you to cure your anxiety. Now, stress affects your perception of reality. Now, I, last week, like I said, that's why people, they do drugs. Because you know why? They want to detach the real. They, wanna, they don't want to accept the reality in life. They are afraid about the reality. That's why they do drugs. They want, instead of reality, they want fantasy to fantasize themselves, you know, they, they, they imagine that, oh, you know, when they do drugs, you're imagining things for a moment. Now, stress affects your perception of reality. You know, how many people, they, they doesn't want to talk about death, physical death. They are afraid of talking about that. One time I was talking about, I was talking to my, to my friend about the funeral plan. And one of my friends said, can we stop talking about, about uh, death? I said, this is a reality. <laughs> you know, me and my friend were talking about funeral plan. And, and you know, that when, when people die, especially here in America, it's very expensive. It was very expensive. I don't know, in the Philippines now, I think the, the St. Peter Kill, they, they have, you know, when you get your plan, that it's way we, it's very expensive now. It's very expensive in the Philippines. That's why, yeah, I think the cremation, it's more, it's more, uh, uh, it's cheaper than the proper burial. No, a lot of people doesn't want to talk about death, but it's a reality. It's a reality in life. Sooner or later, you will face that. That's why you have to be, you, ha you know, you need to learn how to face that. The way. That's why people get shocked when something happened with their loved ones, <gasps> you know, because you're supposed to be, you know, if you know how to live, you need to learn how to die. If you learn how to die, you need to learn how to live. See, people want that, that they doesn't want to talk about reality. People doesn't want to talk about Jesus Christ. See, stress affects your perception of reality. Now, when stress is removed, cognition uh, cognitive ability can be restored. That's why you, 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 the learning in your life restored. If a person remains in stress for so long, now listen to that. If a person remains in a stress for so long, I have so many friends that they are still there in the stress. Now, how, may, how long is it now? How long it has been that you have been stressed and they've been stressed for the same, the same issue in life. Now, all of his cognitive ability is destroyed and enters in, into a psychotic state. That's why you need to have a psychiatrist to look at you, to check on you if you're still okay. See, this is a psychological principle of spread, stress. The reason why, because you came up short on the rest of God. Listen, the believer who came up short, this is the alternative of the believer. And now, the doctrinal principle of stress and adversity, this principle also applies to prosperity, the prosperity testing, which creates great stress in, in the soul of the believer. Now, prosperity testing, it's, you know, that, that is really crazy. 
because that is the highest form of that is the highest form of testing. I have a friend. He has a brand new car. He was very happy. He was very happy. I have my friend. He was so very, he was very happy because he has a brand new car. He said, man, this is my dream car. You know, he let, he let one of his friends borrow the car and the, the, the car got scratched. You know, every time he always see that scratch, it makes him stress. Every time he always see that scratch, he said, you know, I shouldn't let him borrow it. I should, you know, the happiness, <laughs> and it's very true. Every time he saw that scratch right there, you know, it makes him so stressed. Shouldn't let him borrow it. That dent in the car. It's just a car. It's just a car. But see, you know, See, that's how people, no matter what happened in our lives, everything goes. And that's why adversity is outside pressure. See, all this thing now is outside pressure, our politics, our government now. All that thing is outside of us. We, can't, we don't control it. We can control things. The, the disasters that we face today, that's pressure. See, the outside adversity, now stress is inside pressure in your life. Stress is what you do to yourself. Now, that is so important. I, every time you give counseling, every time you give advice to your friend that, you know, the reason why you are stressed is, is you did that in yourself. There's always a solution for that. You allow the factors in your life, your relationship, your marriage, your financial to affect you. You know, you, you, you can stop that. See, stress is what you do to yourself. Adversity is what circumstances do to you. But if you allow circumstances to get in in your soul, and that's what happened, that's the reason why you are so stressful. You know, sometimes if you are stressed, you cannot even sleep. You cannot even sleep. Thinking about, oh, What's going to happen next? I have my bills. I need to pay that because if I don't pay that, it's good. You know, I'm telling you, that's a reality. That is a reality in life. I have to pay this thing and I, I have to look for somebody. I can borrow some money and, and so on and so forth. You know, that's, that's a reality. Not only that, for example, you know, I, it's so many circumstances that will affect you. The job. You have a write-up. You know, things like that. Adversity is what you do to yourself. See, adversity is inevitable. The word inevitable is you cannot avoid it. It's you cannot avoid that thing. It's out of your control. Now, based on out of your control, but stress is optional. It's optional. It's what you do to yourself. It's stress is what you do to yourself. Now, when you face this, uh, this adversity, no, it's up to you whether you react or you respond uh, with Bible doctrine. That's why the Exodus generation, what happened? They never responded that uh, with Bible doctrine that was taught by Moses. What happened to them? They said they reacted to their circumstances. And what happened to them? They were weeping and weeping. They were crying and they died in Cadiz Barnea. See, it's optional. Stress in the soul contradicts the protocol plan of God for the church and destroys the spiritual life of the believer. See, stress in the soul contradicts the protocol plan of God. See, that's the thing. The stress in the soul contradicts the protocol plan of God. That means stress is not God's will in your life. The will of God for you is to be happy. Like I said last week, there is no day that's such a bad day for a believer. Because the Bible says, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this day. Because God made this day. He allows you to, to, to still come in this day, to, to see the sunshine of this day. Be happy. I will rejoice and be glad this day. Now here, let's go to verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached, okay? Exodus generation, as well as, uh, oh, 
the new generation and as well unto them it was but the word preached okay but the word they heard did not profit them did not profit them because the truth that they heard they never mix that with faith the truth that they heard they did they, they're not being did that mix that with faith and in them to them that heard it the exodus generation remember <coughs> moses in the border sending spies and what happened when the return when the spy network returned what did he do moses gave them the truth the believer of that generation the exodus generation they received the truth from god as true but it never affect in their life it never changed their life you know it's very interesting because people wanted to change the world believer wanted to change the world they're so interested to change the world but they're not interested to change their lives that's the sad truth people trying to to, to change the world very interested to change the world but they're not interested of changing their lives for you to change the world it has to start with you okay now the reason the word prophet is you can sit down in bible class for 30 years they, they had 40 years you know you can sit down in bible class for 40 years for 30 years 20 years how long is that it has been but it never changed your life. It, you never transform. The reason why, because this is the reason why. This is the mechanics. You never mix the promises of God with, with faith. See, a contrast is set up between Exodus generation of the believers and the believers today, new generation. The analogy is obvious. They had the promises. We have the promises. They failed to claim the promises. And guess what? Are we going to follow their lead? No. We're not going to follow their lead now. We must not follow their example. They failed. But is there anybody who win? Joshua and Caleb. We have to follow those guys who lead the championship. We have to follow them. How did they, how did they become a champion? Joshua and Caleb. See, they have the promises. They failed to claim. We must not follow them. The promises of the word are only profitable. No, listen to that. The, the Bible is only, the promises in the Bible is only profitable when they are mixed with our faith. When they are mixed with your faith. Now, that's why here we have the contrast. Exodus generation starts from Egypt. Now, we all start from the cross. God saves us. They have faith to get out from Canaan. We have faith to get out from our slave market of sin. We are here. This is our, the spiritual growth process is our wilderness wandering. Canaan is a picture of spiritual maturity. Now, the believer today, this is our picture of spiritual maturity. Now, if the... Most of the Exodus generation, they are still over here in this spiritual growth process. We call this wilderness. As today, we are still here. You know, many believers, they never came up to spiritual maturity. But there's, there's no trip. We got, you still have hope. You're still breathing. You can, came in, you can come up into spiritual maturity. You just have to keep on keeping on. Be positive to the word of God. That's what happened to the wilderness in Canaan, the Exodus generation. They failed to get into the promised land because they never mix the promises of God with faith. Now, the same thing in our generation today. We need to get in into a spiritual maturity. Now, here, the faith rest drill, the word drill is a step. You know, when you go in military, they have one, two, left. Turn right. You know, there's a step. Left, right, turn. There's a, we call that drill, a military drill. Now, the faith-rest life, it also have a drill. There's a step. 
Now, the feet wrist drill is a versatile technique for overcoming any difficulty, problem, or disaster in life. By faith, the believer applies doctrine logically while resting in God's promise. While resting in God's promises. Now, the three steps of faith risk drill, the believer first establishes, number one, if you claim the promises of God, it gives you a relaxed mental attitude. You're not panicking about your situation. You know, there will be sudden things that will happen in your life. For example, you know, when you get a car accident, when your friend got car accident, family members got accident and, you know, they lost their lives. That's a shocking. That is a shocking. When the doctor will tell you that you have this, you know, that's a shocking thing. It shocks you. You're not relaxed. You're panicking. You push the panic button when you hear the report. But, you know, you just have to claim the promises of God. That's why it gives you a relaxed mental attitude. That's why if the believer that never claimed the promises of God, that kind of believer, he is in the panic mode. And if you are in the panic mode, you cannot think Bible doctrine because you know why? You're not relaxed. Only but the believer can think, think Bible doctrine if you are relaxed. That's why you have to claim the step one. You need to claim the promises first so that it gives you a relaxed mental attitude. Then you concentrate on pertinent doctrine in your soul in order for you to have a logical rational. That's the step two of the faith risk drill. Now, restoring the divine viewpoint thinking finally reaches the doctrinal conclusion. You need to take control of your situation. There will be a situation in your life that beyond all your control. There will be a situation in your life that it's, it's up your hand. And I'm telling you, one day in your life, you will face the giants. If you keep on keeping on, you will face the giants the same way you face the little mosquito today. Now here, the steps. First, step one is you need to claim a biblical promises of God. The step two, this is the faith risk drill. Apply a doctrinal rational. This is so important. And in step three, we you have you reach in doctrinal conclusion to take control of your situation. That's why here is step one. You need to claim the promises of God. In the Bible, we have the the principles, promises, doctrines, and technique and rules for living. You need to claim a biblical promises of God. Now, if you don't have no promises, I have so, so much example today for you. I'll, I'll give this to you. And for all those people who's listening to this, if you don't have a promises of God, at least one, you will get one before you, before you exit your YouTube. Or before we go out today, at least you have one. Okay? I will give you one. I'm going to give you one. Now, what is a promise? What is a promise? A promise is a divine guarantee. It's a capsule statement. You know, when you take a pill, it's a capsule. You need to take it in. Listen, that's why faith, faith is very important. The faith is the things hoped for of the things you cannot see. For example, I'll give you a, a very vivid example. You know, you have a headache and you go to your doctor. Doc, I, I have headache and it's been three days now. And I can't even figure out if it's a migraine or, or my BP went up. And, and the doctor said, oh, let's get a checkup, you know. So that's beyond you now. And the doctor will say, oh, I see. I see what's going on with you. And the doctor will grab it. You grab the thing like this, and then, okay, take this to Walgreens on the pharmacy. See, you act by faith, 
because you know the doctor the doctor grabbed the prescription and guess what you cannot even you don't even know what's in it but you believe that you put faith on that see the doctor don't know how to write the doctor don't know how to write any prescription because if if you can read their prescription they're not a real doctor I went to my one time and I really tried to read that, that doctor's, doctor's prescription. No one can read that. So you take that prescription and you go to Walgreens and you go to the pharmacy and, and you just hand it to them. You, you have faith. You believe that that doctor give you, well, it's, it's the right medicine. You give that to the pharmacy and the pharmacy is like, oh, okay, oh, I see one, two, three. <laughs> One, two, three. It's just, you, you cannot, it's just one word, you know? And you grab that receipt and then the pharmacist says, oh, let me have that thing again. There's one more. You know, you're over there wondering what's going on. This one and this one, they, they're the only one that can read. Maybe, you know, one, th one time in my life, I thought that the doctor called the pharmacist, you know, we're just going to see it and what's the reaction, you know? And you just give this prescription that you have no idea. See, that's faith. Now, the pharmacy says, okay, I have your medicine. And I want you to take this every four hours. Okay. Every four hours. So you grab the medicine. You grab the medicine. And you have everything. You, you have everything that can, you know, cure your migraine. But what happened was... Because you, you only take the medicine, because you only take the medicine, you did not obey, listen, you did not obey what the pharmacist said. You have the medicine, but you never drink the medicine. You have the thing that can cure your headache, but you never take it in every four hours. See, faith, it will take obedience. Faith will... I'm telling you, you have the source of solution, but what happened? You did not obey. You did not obey. What did the pharmacist say? Take it every four hours, but you never take it in. You just take it home. You just take it home and put it right over there in your medical kit medicine. See, that's, that, that's faith. That is faith. See, our promises is a divine guarantee, a capsule statement of doctrine, it's a solid rock on which to anchor your mental attitude. That means that the promises of God, see, God did not accidentally just write it down right there. God did not accidentally write a prescription. That prescription that God wrote is for your own good. That means every promises in the Bible is not an empty promise. An empty promise. It's not like your friend, our mom, our dad. You know, we're just human. That our promises. You know how how we promise. I'm gonna be there, but we're not gonna be there. I'm gonna be there. We're not gonna be there. You know. But see, we're just human. See, that's the promises. Now. Claim, you have to claim. This is how you claim it, by faith, the promises of God. Now, we have the example here, Isaiah 41.10. And I want you to read that one. What did he say? Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely, I will help you. Surely, I will uphold with my righteous hand. That's a promise of God. That's a heavy promise. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid because God is always with you. Isaiah 41.10. I'm anxiously looking about you. I, I've been looking for you for so long. I, I've been watching you every step of the day for I am your God. I am your God. I will strengthen you. Every time that we are weak in our sorrow, in our, God will strengthen you. I will help you. God said, I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous hand in Isaiah 41.10. That's one of the, who wants to get that? 
That's a promise in the Bible. Another one. Casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. Casting all your cares. Trust in the Lord. For God careth for you. Another one. Cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. I love that. Psalms 55, 22, 1 Peter 5, 7. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. See, if you are righteous in the sight of God, no one, you know, no one can move you because you know why? The stability. It's like, you know, I saw this movie. He is a Tai Chi master, and they're trying to, to break him, but he, because of the solid training that he has, no one can even move him. That's the righteous. God doesn't want the righteous to be moved. Cast, cast thy burden upon the Lord. The, the word burden is your heavy load, your baggage. Your baggage. You have to cast it in the Lord. It means you slam it to the Lord. Lord, you can have that. You know, I'm just going to do what you will. Now, what else? See, that's the promises of God. That's not an empty promise. You have to claim those promises of God. You have to claim those promises. Now, what else? Right here. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean unto your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. That's another prize. Proverbs 3, 5, 6. That's one of my favorite one. That's one of my favorite one. That's one of my favorite promise. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. See, all your heart. It's not 50%. It's not 20%. It's all 100% trust in the Lord. It's not only, Lord, I'll trust you. Maybe this moment, maybe, you know, I'll do it. I'll do the 70%, you do the 40%. No, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Okay? Lord, you can have the 40 and have my mom maybe 30%. No, you can't have that. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean thy own understanding. See, you know what? We, that's what happened when you lean your own understanding. You already know what's going to happen if you lean with your own understanding. Because we are finite. We are so limited. We need to rely on the infinite mind of God. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. In all thy ways, it means moment by moment, you need to acknowledge the Lord. And if you do that, what did he say? There's a promise. He will direct your path. He will direct your path. Okay. Oh, I love that. Proverbs 3, 5, 6. That's one of my favorite verse that I've been holding that for so many years. Now, one more. What else is the promise of God? Psalms 37, 4, 5. Delight yourself into the Lord, also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of your heart. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. I love it. I love that. <clears throat> Delight yourself unto the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. What are you desiring now? What are you desiring? You know, mostly of people, why they do what they do is just they just want to be happy. You know, when you look at the contest, the, the X Factor, you know, the American Idol, the reason why they, they attend the contest is one day they just want to be happy. The reason why they do what they do is they seek that happiness. Maybe I can get it right here. Maybe I can get it right here, you know, in my vacation. Maybe I can go right here. Maybe I find a happiness right here. But whatever, whatever King Solomon says, you know, in every avenues in life, vanity of all vanity. Solomon tried everything. But see, commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him. Trust him. You have to trust him. The reason why the Exodus generation they came up short because they failed to trust the Lord and he shall bring it to pass. What else? Romans 8.28. I love it. This is one of my favorite. This is my spiritual appeal. All things work together for good. And we know that God will work all things together for good. <clears throat> grab this. And for all those people who's going to listen, if you don't have no promise, grab this. Okay? 
He will work all things together for good because God's plan for you is not just for today. His plan for you is in eternity. That's why he do everything for you in this process is because he wants you to become somebody one day. Okay. Now here, another one. Salvation belongs to the Lord. And that salvation is not just the salvation that you are saved through all the lake of fire. Salvation that he's talking here in Psalms 3.8 is every day. It means you are saved. You know, there's so many times I've been almost in a car accident. When I go home 2 o'clock in the morning, there are so many crazy drivers. You know, every time I almost get car accident, I, I, I never take my credit on that. Because God, God saved me again. God saved me again. The same thing as, as David. He saved me. He saved me. Save me, Lord. Save me. Psalms 3.8. What else? Psalms 27.1. I, I love this too. The Lord is my light and my salvation. If God is your light and your salvation, whom shall I fear? There's nothing that you will be afraid of. Ooh, amazing. Matthew 6.33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. This is one of my favorite verses since I was a kid. And all these things shall be added unto you. That's a promise. See, that's a promise of God. What you have to do? Plus, you need to mix that with faith. All, the, all these things that we have been um, uh, talking right now, you have to mix this with faith. You have to believe that, to claim that promises. Exodus 14, 13, what did Moses say? Stand still and watch the deliverance of the Lord. When they were in the dead and when there's nothing you can do anymore, stand still and watch the Lord do it for you. What else? Exodus 14, 14, the Lord will fight for you while you keep on silent. The Lord will fight for you while you keep silent. See, the Lord is the one who's fighting for you. You just have to go. First Samuel 17, 47, this is one of, one of the uh, passes that was been all over. The battle is... The Lord, when, when David, he was facing the giant Goliath, this is, he declared that the battle is the Lord. The battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord. The fight is yours, but the battle is the Lord's. Oh, you know, Psalms 56, 8, when they taught us this back in 19, uh, 1995 in the youth camp, when I encountered this promise of God, I claimed that for so many years. What did God say in Psalms 56, 8? You keep, you keep track of all my sorrows. <clears throat> you have collected all my tears in your battle. Amazing. There, there will be time in your life that you've been crying with this broken hearted and despair. So many times that there will be time in your life that there are circumstances that it creates broken heart. It breaks your heart. For example, maybe one friend, it betrays you. Have you been betrayed before? It breaks your heart because you love them. You love your friend, family members, or whoever. But you know, during your sorrows, God is tracking that. He knows every time you are hurting. And listen, your tears, God collect your tears in the battle. He put that in the battle. It's a figure of speech. It means that God is there for you. He was tracking you every time that you are, you know, there every time in your life that you are crying. That you are crying. See, you have recorded each one of your book. When was that, that the last time you cried because of it's so hurt? It hurts. It hurts. You know, you broke up with your girlfriend, you broke up with your boyfriend, and in your relationship was was shaky, and you, it, it hurts you. We call that despair. It, it breaks your heart. It breaks your heart. 
you know, a lot of people, when they are brokenhearted, it took them a while to recover it. It took them a while to recover it. That's why here, Psalms 56, 8, you keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears. Oh, that's so amazing. Don't you know that every time you cry, God knows every tears that you drop? That's a promise. Psalms 147.3, he heals the brokenhearted and bind up their wounds. Is your heart broken today? He will bind up your wounds. Are you wounded? See, Psalms 147.3, this is a promise that you have to claim. You have to claim it by faith. What else? Love never fail. 1 Corinthians 13.8. Love never fail. What else? Psalms 146.5. Happy is he whose hope is in the Lord. Now, if your hope, you put it to the Lord, now you are the happiest person in the surface of the earth. James 4.7, what did it say? Submit yourselves therefore to God, for he will prosper you in the due time. Submit yourselves. It means humble yourselves. <laughs> There's so many promises. Now, if you don't have one, you get one. You get one. And, 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 and keep that for the rest of your life. Now, here, Hebrews 13, 8. This is one of my favorite ones, too. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If Jesus can do this to Moses, he can do it to me. If Jesus can, if God can do this to Elijah, he can do it also for me. If God can do it to Daniel, he can also do it for me because God, he is immutable. That's part of his characteristic. Now, what else? When I am afraid, I will trust in the. Are you afraid? When I am afraid, I will, I will trust in thee. Psalms 56, 3. When the time that you are afraid, there will be time in your life that you are afraid. Remember when David, this is David. When he, when he was run away, when King Saul, well, he was chasing to murder David. He, was, he wants to, to, to kill David. King Saul wants to kill David because of jealousy. He was so jealous about David. Now, David, he was afraid of King Saul. But, you know, he learned Bible doctrine in the, in the cave of Adullam because Jesus Christ was there with him. Occupation with the Lord Jesus Christ. See, when, when I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Uh, this is so deep. You know, last night while I was writing this, Every time, because these verses, I quoted this in the moment that I was down. It just, it passes me when I was writing this. Because it, 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 it's so much memory. It's so much history in my life. That all these verses, I used this during this moment. That God saved me in that moment. When I am afraid, I will trust in thee. You know, the Lord is for me. Psalms 118, the Lord is for me. I will not fear what man can do to me. Oh, are you afraid of man can do to you? This is what David says. The Lord is for me. If God allows that there's something that harms me, that means God allow it. Nothing can harm you unless God allows it. I will not fear what man can do to me. That's a promise. <clears throat> do not fear or be dismayed because of this great multitude for the battle is not is not yours but God second chronicle 20 22 are you afraid there, there's so there's many of them and you're only one you know are you afraid because there's so many they are out numbers you are out numbers you're only three there's only three of us there's so many of them but what what did Chronicle says, do not be fear or be dismayed because of this great multitude. 
for the battle is not yours, but it's God. It's amazing. What's that song? What's that song? Um, you know, um, uh, the battle that uh, God is with me, that you're facing the battle. Uh, that's new song right now. I, you know, that. The battle. Yeah, the battle. Phil Wickham. Yeah, Phil Wickham. Yeah, the battle. Yeah. You thought. Uh, Exodus 14 14. Mm hmm. Oh, uh, okay. Exodus 14 14. Girl, right here. That's right. Wow. Yeah, right there. Exodus 14. The Lord will fight for you while you keep silent. April 15 and 15. Mm -hmm. And in the last one, this is one, you know, when I learned this in the youth camp, Luke 137. I hold this verse, I claim it for so many years, and it builds up and it builds up. What did Luke 117 say? Nothing is impossible with God. That's a promise. That's a promise. For us, it's very impossible. But for God, nothing is impossible with God. He is a way maker. Remember that song today? Uh, uh, yeah, way maker. Um, what's, what's his name? Michael W. Smith. Yeah, way maker. He will make a way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a very interesting. See, th this is not just a, a good rhyming word. You know, you can make a rap out of it. This is not a good rhyming word. Nothing is impossible with God. All things work together for good. It sounds really good. It just sounds good. But you know, these promises is not empty promises in the Bible. You need to claim this. This is part one of the faith risk drill. We call this claim the promises of God. Next week, we're going to study about the step two of doctrinal rational we're gonna go to step two that's why if you still have promises that you found i you know there's thousands of promises in the bible this is just an example this is just an example and for all those for you you i know so you have some promises in the bible claim that with mix that with promises to develop a relaxed mentality so nothing is impossible with god Nothing is impossible with God. For us, it's very impossible. But in Luke 137 says, there is nothing impossible with God. This is the background of Mary. You know what did Mary say? How could it be? I'm a virgin and I have, you know, I'm, I'm bearing a son. What did, what did the angel say? There is no impossible with God. Do you think there's impossible with God? <laughs> there, there's, anything is possible with God. With, uh, with your heads bowed, and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for who and what you are. Thank you for today that we gather once again to study with your word, Father. Thank, thank you so much. If, to recall all these promises that we have right now, Father, it's so amazing. It's very amazing how, how you put all this together. You, you did not put this in the Bible accidentally. You put this for a purpose and a reason why you put this in. All we have to do, we have to claim it. Like the Exodus generation, you know, they, they, they failed the, the promises of God. They haven't claimed the promises of God. That's why if you have the promises of God right now, you have to claim it now or 40 years from now. That's why we have to mix this with, with faith. Thank you so much, Father, for my family and for all those people who listen to the word of God and all over the all over the world, in the Philippines, in Hawaii, here, Japan, in Canada. Bless them, O oh Lord, and, and my family, loved ones, Father. And thank you so much for today. And we pray for Jaden, Father. Protect him. Put him in safety. And for all our loved ones who are uh, sickness, uh, recover them father and for our financial thank you so much and give us the safety father as we go there, there is no safety out there this very dangerous that every time we go out from wherever we go father the only safety we have is in the lord thank you so much for who and what you are father but thank you for loving us and all these things that we we study here we ask the holy spirit to guide us, to give us the enlightened and uh, the spiritual IQ that we need, Father. Thank you so much for tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you. And let me. Let me close. Let me close the recording. One second. Let me stop the recording.